ik zou die nou <coughs> live moeten gaan. Een gevoelige uh, boodschap op je, <laughs> je ah, nee. bord. Luistering offline. Ik ga even naar voren komen nu. Kijk. Yes. Top, kijk. Yes. Are we live? Ja, top, kijk. Okay. Yes. Are we live? Ja, top, kijk. Okay. Yes. Are we live? Ja, top, kijk. Yes. Are we live? Ja, top, kijk. Zo. Top. Ja. Is it okay if we do it in English? Ja, yeah, of course. Ja? Yeah? Ja, yeah, sure. Perfect. Um, welcome Bart. Thanks for uh, joining me here in the, in the Q&A session. I'm curious to see how many people we... Uh, oh, I see two people. Tim Worth Worthington and Tribal Head checking in. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. This is actually the first time I'm streaming on... Uh, on YouTube, so we'll see what happens. Hey, Rosalie Visser, we're drinking water. <laughs> That's how uh, rock star we are. Rock and roll, <laughs> baby. <laughs> mm. Anyway, thanks for uh, joining me here in it's the Q&A uh, session. Thanks for having me again. It's yeah, really cool. it's fun to see you here. Last time we did the video chat yeah. thingy, yeah, and now in real life, yeah, that's and cool. we actually never met in real life before. This was the first time. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's weird. That's so weird because it feels like you already met each other or you already yeah know each other. Yeah, we always were in the same uh, kind of circles. So <coughs> yeah, that's weird. I I didn't even realize that. You know? No, I just thought about it. It's fun. <laughs> uh, no, we won't. Yeah, we wouldn't drink alcohol now. Tribal head. Maybe later. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> um, but yeah, the thing that I want to do today is um, go through Q and A. I have some questions that I gathered on my Instagram yesterday and on the community Facebook page. Uh, so we'll go we'll go through that. And um, if people in the chat room have other questions, feel free to ask. Bart is here to. Uh, talk about the stuff that you would like to know more about and otherwise I'll have some questions for you nice so yeah. Um, yeah let's just get started with the first ones that I got on my Instagram page are you a big fan of Instagram me yeah uh, yeah of course I mean there is a um, uh, Instagram can also be um, a really good thing for inspiration hmm well, actually, I actually made a track out of one of the. Um, oh yeah, the super zoom. The track. super zoom, uh, one of the um, yeah filters yeah. thingies. How did you came up with that ID? Um, yeah, just it it just came to me um, one day when I was just uh, on Instagram, just checking everyone's stories, and yeah. then I saw, I heard the sound, I was like, this sounds kind of trappy or something, <laughs> and it could be cool to uh, implement that into a house song. Yeah to see where it goes and uh, yeah just uh, took it from Instagram uh, sampled mm -hmm. it and then started working uh, with the baseline around it and uh, okay how did you sample it uh, I just recorded it from my phone oh really but I um, later on I actually replayed the sample mm -hmm. because I didn't want to get in trouble with Instagram with any copyright issues oh so stuff. you made it yourself uh, yeah okay uh, recreate it but oh, it wow. still sounds uh, the it same. sounds the exact same i didn't notice it was well, I, I actually i have to be honest i got a little help from a friend who <laughs> okay. is like an amazing okay. uh, sound designer and cool. he really helped me get like the exact almost the exact same sound so that was okay. really yeah really well cool. you nailed it <laughs> <laughs> well yeah with a lot of with uh, his help he uh, yeah he did a great job yeah. i actually don't know if instagram has copyrighted those sounds but I don't know either, but I wanted to be safe. And yeah, not better safe than and sorry, right? And not get right? sued, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Royal Junk, yes, you're on time. Guys, to everyone who's watching, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Uh, where do you get your inspiration from? And I know this is something you talked about at Dance Fair as well. So, where did yeah. it come from? Well, I got an hour presentation that yeah. I can give. <laughs> I'll be back in an hour, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, um, 
Yeah, from I I draw inspiration from so many things and so many angles. Um, I always look at a lot of music, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but also old music, new music, maybe music from different genres. Mm -hmm. um, but also like from Instagram, for example, um, just sounds that I hear around me. Oh, really? So um, you just go to your Instagram timeline, watch videos? Yeah, I mean, whatever. Um, yeah, you see, obviously, a lot of uh, other DJs <coughs> and producers post their songs on Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that can give you inspiration. Okay. But also just any sound that you could hear around you. Yeah. Um, I always have fun also sampling stuff. So maybe like I, I sampled like my, all my kitchen appliances and stuff. Really? And, so, um, so you use your mic a lot? I do. I uh, I actually like never use it. It's right there, and I, I bought this one because that one's too far. <laughs> <laughs> it is really far. Yeah. yeah. So I yeah, it's just crazy. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that I've, that's a cool thing to do because you you get your own organic sounds, mm -hmm. and I also, man, I've used so many animal sounds in my <laughs> in my tracks. I think I, I've sound I've sampled or used sounds of uh, my cat. Uh, for example, and what's the name of your cat? I have two cats, and uh, they're called Peace and Kathy. Peace uh, and Kathy. I didn't name them myself. That, that, oh, really? That's the name that they already had when I adopted them from the mm -hmm. shelter. But uh, yeah, I just like was recording them with my phone, you know, mm -hmm. and then using those samples in my in my tracks. So there's like hidden samples that we might not hear at first. Yeah. On the actual track. Yeah, it's just very subtle, subtle but yeah. maybe uh, uh, different than other than yeah. other sounds because it doesn't come from a, a sample pack or yeah. stuff that other people have. But I also use those sounds. I mean, sample packs can be great for inspiration as well. Sometimes they do. Like, yeah, we had the conversation earlier with the splice thing and people yeah. using the samples from the same sample packs, um, which might be a problem because a lot sounds the same this might yeah. be a great way to uh, to cancel that out yeah but also with with sample packs you can be more creative you mm -hmm. don't have to use the sample as it is or mm -hmm. the sound as it is you can true you know mess around with it just yeah. reverse it uh, <laughs> yeah. put process it or process it yeah like you use distortion or anything or just like mess around with it mm. until you get something completely different cool smart one yeah um i see jack doll checking in jack doll 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 i think uh how to develop your own sound but still stay within the real i never know how to pronounce that word realms realms the realms realms yeah that's the one uh within the realms of a certain genre like hexagon future house style um i think for that it's important to uh, know a lot about yourself and mm -hmm. the things that you like and um you know maybe you're interested in that future house sound in that don diablo sound mm -hmm. but there must be other sounds that you love as well so just try to incorporate some of those sounds into that future house yeah. stuff as well and for that you really need to like um know what kind of stuff you like and you know yeah. what is it that makes you tick like what kind yeah, of music? Yeah, exactly. And you how know, did you how did you find that out? Um, just by experiencing it. Yeah. Really. Because you're doing this how much years? Ten. Uh, professionally for twelve years. Twelve. Oh yeah. But I think I've been DJing for and making music for twenty years. Oh wow. So it, it actually took me eight years to kind of uh, create a business out of it. Yeah. Cool. I actually see uh, a question coming in, which I think is really interesting, and I've been dying to talk about this. I'm not sure if you've if you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, I'll explain it. Uh, Royal Junk asks, "What are your thoughts on Colonel Sanders on UMF? <laughs> have you seen it?" Yes, I have. Yeah. Would you like to talk about it? Sure. I mean, what what's your thought on it? It doesn't. I think it's like completely. Um, how do you say that in English? Like the blog mislan, you know? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't it, make sense. It's missing the target. Like <laughs> it's, 
it's like a, a corporate business trying to convince yeah ravers I'm, um, I'm not sure the thing is the first problem is we're talking about it which is advertising so that's what they wanted to so yeah. i they they probably you know probably reached our goal but <coughs> the problem is well a lot of people talk about it so yeah but the problem is is a festival stage the right place to do that i think you know as a rave culture people like to maybe sometimes escape from all yeah. that stuff you know like yeah. uh at a at a rave you can just be yourself be mm -hmm. be free and you don't have to you're not being bombarded by like all these ads all the time yeah <laughs> and then now you are so i don't i think it kind of goes in against rave culture yeah really. I, so, I, but a lot of people talk about it so i guess they already reached their goal but the problem yeah. the thing is i was watching the live stream and uh so it hit you by surprise well yeah <laughs> at, at first the guy was interviewing s two girls on ultra and uh he said like uh his question was th the girls could win something and his question was who's the oldest dj playing ultra and then the answer was colonel sanders <laughs> and i was like who the fuck is what, yeah. who's that you know like because i think Carl cox was playing i'm not sure but i thought who's the who's that guy if i've never heard of him like how sh how does she know him yeah and then like an hour later or two hours later i was watching the stream and this guy came up and a friend of mine said like that looks like the kfc logo <laughs> and then the visuals was like finger licking good it was like fuck yeah so, what's this i was blown away i was really i thought like wow this this is a new low <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i'm curious to see where things go from here but yeah interesting topic that's the thing yeah where does it where does it start this is the, i think this is just the beginning now that one one festival started doing it i think more will follow yeah I so guess. it's it's just like youtube now you, you have to watch an ad before you see your favorite dj play. yeah that yeah. sounds horrible to be honest you can't escape like even live you have to see an ad that's terrible yeah, yeah. cool uh, next one how do you motivate yourself that's a good one um <coughs> that's actually just really easy because i just love music so much mm -hmm. um, but do you never feel like not making music um yeah of course but then i'm probably listening to music <laughs> okay uh, yeah. you're not always inspired but you can also um work on being inspired as well mm -hmm. and just by listening to other music and maybe watch a movie or something or yeah you can be inspired by conversations that you have with your friends and mm -hmm. stuff or by going out for a night um yeah i mean what, for what example this weekend i was i was hanging out with some friends and we were just talking about music and the next day i just wanted to go into the studio and make music because hmm. i had all these ideas and they gave me their yeah. their input and you know it's just uh, and what um like do you have a balance in there because sometimes i get the question from starting producers uh saying like i feel like i have to make music every day to become a big dj yeah uh but do you take days off every now and then um not really no always working no. um pretty much but wow um it's usually pretty random mm -hmm so when i i feel like oversaturated and i i don't feel inspired anymore yeah that's when i usually take one day and say like okay today i'm just gonna chill yeah and just not think about music for uh for a while i think that's that's the best thing to do just listen to, to yourself like yeah i always say if you if you spot yourself just refreshing facebook over and over again that's probably the time to leave you know like yeah at least that's what I always noticed <laughs> when I <laughs> when I trick myself into going online and clicking and clicking and getting lost on the internet. Yeah. That means I wasn't capable of making music that day, so I just you need to step away. Yeah, just take a day off, and when the sun shines, just go outside, do something else, but yeah. reset your brain from uh, what you were doing at that time. I don't think we get a lot of sunshine. No, well, oh, I okay. do nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's there's one win already. I have I have a I have a 
a window now. Yeah, you have a window. That's yeah. great. Like my old studio was completely built in darkness Dark. all day long. Yeah. It get, it does give you that club vibe, yeah, right? Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> but right here, I can dim the lights and I can lower down the lights so it's still a dark place to to make music if you want to. Yeah. I actually never made music, so maybe. never. I think I've made music uh, three times now. Okay. In seven months, eight months, nine months. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. At that moment, I did. Yeah. But sometimes it's like you said. Sometimes that feeling grabs you, that inspires you, and feel like, hey, I'm, I feel like making music again. Yeah. Um, and now that I have the opportunity again of the studio, it's easier for me to actually do it. But that feeling just doesn't come that much anymore like 10 years ago it was every single day i have it a lot when i listen to old music now so yeah like club tracks from 10 years ago mm -hmm. um when i listen to them now i, th I really think like man this is so good i want to yeah. make like a 2019 version of this track yeah and just um use that as a as an inspiration but try to do it in a more modern yeah. modern way. Take it to these days, yeah, like with the new opportunities and the new samples and stuff. Because a lot of people haven't heard those tracks yet. Yeah. What's your favorite old track? Like your, your old timer? Oof. Oh man, you're kind of putting me <laughs> on the spot <laughs> right now. I'll uh, tell you mine. Mine is uh, Man with the Red Face. Oh. I love that one. The Mark Knight version and Funk Agenda. Because there's a million versions of it. Yeah, that's uh, it's the original is uh, Laurent Garnier, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, okay, let me think about it for a little bit, and I'll get back to you yeah, on that sure. one. Yeah, sure. Sure. We'll pause that. <laughs> uh, tribal head, but you have any career that supports before getting into the music career? Do you work? I mean, do you have a job? Okay, so the question is, do you do something else aside from the music? Um, no, I've been <coughs> very lucky that I kind of was able to um, to start making a living. Um, well, I did have, cause so, so I was in university, so mm -hmm. I did have like jobs on the side. Um, like newspapers or? Uh, no, I was working in an office somewhere. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I was doing that on the side, but uh, actually my last year of university, I was already playing so many shows that I was able to to make a business out of it. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. so I, I I never had a full time job before I started doing doing music. Mm. I think that's what the question was. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And right now. <clears throat> yeah. No. I, I've been lucky to uh, to um, uh, yeah make this uh, a profession for uh, yeah for so many years already. So. It's also different times. Like we spoke about it earlier. At that time. Not everyone was a DJ no. uh, or a music producer. Like being a mu music producer back then was way harder. Um, and Technically, yeah. Yeah, l like you had to get the right equipment and stuff. It was more expensive. Right now it's all software and easy to get. It's free or illegally downloadable or whatever you want to do with it. It's just more uh, accessible. Yeah. And um, I think right now there's just more people who do the profession so it's harder to get the slot on the stage yeah plus there weren't as many youtube tutorials yep. and stuff yeah but that's also a disadvantage now because a lot of people watch that and they all kind of sound the same because they're yeah. using they're using the same sounds and they're also using the same techniques yeah same tips and tricks true yeah so that's, it's a blessing that's and tricky. a curse at the same time exactly yeah, true. Yeah. like i was talking to someone else like would it help me if i would have had those tutorials when i started i just had my nephew who i, who I could call and say like hey i'm struggling with this could you come over yeah <laughs> and yeah. then he ran over yeah. and it's like oh you have to do this oh, cool <laughs> yeah and then i could continue it just took me three hours longer than normal uh but yeah it worked but I, i'm actually not sure i think it's an interesting paradox because you know it could have helped you but it also maybe didn't give you your own sound yeah exactly i think if if i think i learned from i learned making music by the struggle by yeah. pushing by yourself trial and error yeah trying things and yeah hopefully 
get something yeah but get some cool sounds yeah but at the same time you still learn cricket now if you if you want to know something you just google it and yeah. two minutes later you're good to go yeah so it's a good thing as well uh this is a quick an interesting one from jack doll uh what was your way into getting your first release on a relatively big label was it contacts networking that helped you um, first th- let's do the first question first like how d- did you get your way into the first label well my first release was on uh, tool room yeah. uh, mark knight's uh, label and i just found this email address somewhere i i don't know how <laughs> i got it email but was still old school at that moment yeah, yeah. nobody was emailing no <laughs> but um yeah i just sent him the tracks and he uh he signed them Mm-hmm. But before that, I sent my stuff to so many DJs and no one really replied. Yeah, so much but no's. Yeah. yeah. You don't like a lot it. of rejection. That's also the, something yeah, I really have to um, yeah. deal with as an, as an artist. But um, So you just sent him an email? Yeah. Okay, and what, what happened then? Well, he replied that he really liked the tracks and he wanted uh, to release an EP off of his label. Mm. And... Um, so I was just really, um, yeah, spamming artists, uh, DJs, uh, sending them my tracks, and then I finally got a break. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I think that's still how it how it kind of works, right? It depends. Like sending emails, kind of. It only works if you already have your foot between the door. Like, um, for you or for me, it could be easier because the network's already there. You might have already met the person or spoke to him like yeah. like we did you know like we never met but we already knew who we were so if i would send you an email you would check it yeah but if someone else who you've never met and you never talked to would send you a demo yeah chances are pretty big that labels will not even check it anymore right now plus there i think a lot of djs and artists these days they have people looking over their de- demos yeah like so it's it's a different game as well mm-hmm. um, it that must be more difficult to get catch a break now than yeah because there's m- more music at that time when you send in your music there were like 100 demos a week maybe yeah if maybe not even that I'm not sure but nowadays it's like boom yeah. to the roof it's like a thousand a month or something it's crazy yeah so I feel for you guys who are, who are trying <laughs> to uh, catch a break yeah really yeah it, it, but it's at the same time again it's it's different because it's more it's more challenging as well and you have different opportunities like instagram now which we didn't have no like we couldn't reach out to the whole world by one click of a button so no. everything has its pro and its cons i think definitely um do you mix and master your song yourself uh yes well actually um the um, the last couple tracks i did i had mastered Mm-hmm. Because I I realized I was spending so much time on the <laughs> the final process. It was like the eighty percent of the song I had in a couple hours, and then the other twenty percent it took me like two weeks yeah. to finish. And but I do like to have control over the mix mm-hmm. because I I want to make sure that it sounds a certain way. But and then I just thought like okay well if I want to make sure that it really sounds amazing the end product then why don't i just have someone master it yeah that i know is really good and then you have a second opinion mm. and i trust him so i um uh, i know that it's gonna he's not gonna give me a shitty yeah <laughs> a shitty master so yeah. um that saved me a lot of time actually yeah i can but imagine I, I i pretty much always mastered my own stuff as well because i just wanted to have control over the final product yeah. but I, I'm, I'm slowly stepping away from that and, and mastering is not you know you can do like the final touches mm-hmm. on it the final brushing yeah pretty much but it, it's not gonna change the whole sound of your mm. track the way you made it so i think that's an interesting decision because to me the same like i think there's two different kind of music producers like the technical and the more creative kind of people yeah i was a more technical guy as in i was more about the mix than i was about the melodies yeah um and me too yeah and i think you should focus on the thing that you're good at because 
if it takes you so much time to do something which in the end maybe not even isn't even the best because someone else might do it way better yeah for in for like a small fee or whatever that might be a better investment in my opinion yeah but i do agree with um the mixing and the creative part should be yourself because that's your stamp like that's your yeah. your own your own sound so but there, there are also <coughs> pro producers that have their engineers their own engineers yeah. and yeah. They, they're they not really behind the, the computer making doing all the all the stuff but they they're producers in a sense that uh, they make sure that the f the final product comes out of their brain yeah but they're not hands-on doing all the tweaking and stuff yeah and it's also some people are weird about that but you know, a, a movie producer also doesn't does the, the camera work. <laughs> no. You know, everyone has his own specific task. Yeah. So if you're not a, you know, if you're not a technically good engineer, you can also try to find someone who is. And have you, you ever know, seen Beyonce mixing her album? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's not gonna happen you know I, I would like to see that <laughs> yeah i would like to see that too but i don't think that's gonna happen no <laughs> it's yeah. jay-z who mixes yeah there. probably yeah. someone in, in her in her <laughs> inner circle is doing it let's just see what another question is um your favorite place in utrecht uh my favorite place as in what? As in as uh, in a club? I don't know. Favorite place in Utrecht? I love. Um, Name a few. Like, what's your favorite coffee bar? Do you like coffee? Uh, I'm not a big coffee drinker. Okay. What do you like to drink? Um, I'm pretty. See, I just drink water. Favorite tea, or water tea, bar. Really. <laughs> Maybe I'm. I'm. I was British in a past life or something. I I like to drink tea. Favorite tea bar? Um. Oh God. <laughs> You know, I'm always in the studio. Like I'm, not, I'm not out, out that much. So well, then that's your favorite, tea bar, right? The studio. Yeah, oh for sure. <laughs> and is there like a place? Uh, do you go out often? Um, well, the, um, <coughs> there's um, a club called uh, Tivoli in Utrecht, mm. and they usually book like um, some of my friends there. Mm. Um, also like international DJs and they have, they have really good um, um, uh, agenda like a mm -hmm. program uh, so I usually end up there when there's friends cool. DJing or yeah uh, it's like a pop center right or is the club yeah it's like a venue like um, a club slash yeah. they have many many rooms mm. it's a really cool place cool yeah um, if he was always able to make a living out of music production we kind of touched it like touched that subject but not if you were always able to do it right like um well, well yeah we yeah. did you mentioned that you had some side jobs in the yeah beginning. yeah true <laughs> what what's uh, your favorite preset <laughs> my favorite preset <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um Depends uh, which uh, <laughs> which is synth, right? Um, yeah. What's your favorite synth? Let's start with that. No, but even when I use like uh, presets, mm -hmm. so th the ones that are already made by someone else, then I end up tweaking them because I'm I just can't use something that's yeah you know uh, you just don't like presets. No, because then <coughs> you just sound like everyone else. So yeah, always try to give it your own twist. But. You know, for others maybe that works. I don't mm -hmm. know. So but I think one of the the one of the least exp uh, inspiring things is to go through presets. <laughs> you know, the least. Exp so you already have a melody or a bassline or whatever, and yeah. then you're just skipping through presets. Yeah. I think yeah. that's so like that's so yeah killing your inspiration true. and your creativity. Yeah, it's true. Totally true. So you f you don't you don't really have a favorite preset then? It's like, what's your favorite synth to work with? Like, um, a lot of your go-to synth. A lot of stuff I made with the the Oddity, the G Force Oddity, mm -hmm. which I don't think is that well known. No. Um, th but I just think that's such a cool cool synth. Mm. I also have the the hardware um, synth, the um, Arp Odyssey. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I always uh, grab the, <laughs> the digital one yeah. because I'm too lazy to <laughs> hook up. <laughs> I'd better be lazy than tired, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I really like that one. 
and that's also the one I made uh, Brav with. Mm. But then I layered it with some of the the hardware. Yeah. Synth. What I like about your tracks is that it sounds so minimalistic, but so full at the same time. So every element you use, like maybe there's only six to seven elements in your track or something, maybe even less sometimes, just the bass line and the kick, but still the full uh, frequency spectrum is filled. Like it, it sounds mm. fat. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's what yeah. I like in a track. And I think that kind of represents your sound as well. To me, that's part B more. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also tricky because um, sometimes the music sounds really simple. Mm -hmm. um, but it can also sound too simple almost. Yeah. It's always uh, a very thin line between, I always like to think that you have to make it sound simple, but it's not actually simple. Yeah. I have this saying too, that I think it's a marketing term. I'm not sure. Kiss, have you heard of it? Keep it simple, stupid. Okay. That's what I like to use. Like yeah. Everything you do, keep it simple, stupid, so everyone can understand what you're actually doing. Yeah. The, mo the more complicated you make, well, the more complicated you make it, the less understandable it becomes to the audience. Yeah, but sometimes you hear a song and you think like, oh, this sounds, this is such a cool song, but it sounds so simple, like mm -hmm. I can make this. But then you really start to analyze the song yeah. and you hear all these different dimensions and layers in the track yeah. and you're like, oh, okay, it's not <laughs> actually that simple. It's not that simple. So the trick is to make it sound simple, but yeah, it's not actually yeah, that that's simple. That's a good tip, good tip. Um, okay, I'll just grab a drink first. Would you like to drink? Something sure, I'll have water. some water. I'll have to refill this. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, follow it, Uh You can tell a bit more about this one we already questioned, answered. How did you get your shows around the world? That All right. When, that, when did that start? It? Um, God. <laughs> way, way, way back. Um, probably around 2009. No, I was playing 2007 already. Mm -hmm. I think 2000, yeah, 2007 was when I um, really started to go to the UK a lot. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that was that I got a lot of support from P. Tong on BBC Radio 1. Yeah. And um, that was really big at that moment. Yeah, I think in those days, so that's 12 years ago, it was really the start of my career. Yeah. Um, everyone was still listening to, um, to radio a lot. Yeah. I don't know how it is these days. I think people are more on Spotify than, yeah. uh, than they listen to the radio. I think it depends like the, the, the age of, your <laughs> of your audience. Yeah. Um, I think young people are, are not listening to radio that much anymore maybe at work or whatever but it's probably um um it's pro probably pretty close i mean mm -hmm. i think a lot of people still listen to the radio as well but yeah p tong um he made two of my tracks his essential new tune in his radio show and that was like a, a really big thing yeah um so that launched me into the uk and i was pretty much playing there every weekend mm. So, uh, I think you were one of the first DJs who actually started playing abroad that much. Yeah, it was it was really funny because yeah. I was playing in Holland a lot with guys like um, Hardwell, Laidback yeah. Luke, and um, they, I was already going to to the UK a lot, and they were they they were really like, oh, that's that's really cool that you get to yeah. play there, and. Uh, um, uh, you know, I want to, I want to go international as well. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah, they, uh, they did. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did. <laughs> and it worked uh, out. How did, did you see that, uh, that industry changing as in right now, if you're getting booked in a different country, things are well arranged, your flights arranged, your hotels arranged, the, the pickups are arranged, maybe even the dinners as well. Um, how was that? at <laughs> Sorry for my cough, it's really okay. annoying. Um, but how was it at back at that time? Like, was it all already at that level, or how did that work? Yeah, same it, same thing. Yeah, it 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 was already at a quite professional mm. level, so we never really had to worry about all that stuff. Cool. Mm. 
Yeah. It hasn't changed that that much, really. Just the size of everything. Yeah. Everything's bigger. Maybe the distance as well, because now it's Asia states. Yeah. It's, it's more far away. Like Europe yeah. is like a maximum of four hour flight. Right yeah, now. Yeah, but that's around 2009, 2010, I was already, you know, playing in Australia and, mm. and America. So it hasn't changed that much. It really. changed that much. Yeah. Um, how does he feel about Martijn, Martin Garrix, Team Garrix and Stamped Records? Oh, I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of Stamped Records. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really a cool, a really cool team. And Martijn is, is really a cool guy. Um, it's really cool because I, um, since I've been part of Stamped, I got to know him a little bit and he's just the way you see him uh, on Instagram and stuff and mm -hmm. just like his presence. That's really how he is. Like he's just such an enth enthusiastic, uh, passionate guy. Mm -hmm. He just loves music. And, you know, whenever I'm in the studio at the Stamped Studios and he's around, he, he comes in and listens to my music and he wants to play me his new music mm -hmm. and stuff. And uh, even though I don't really make the same kind of music as him, he still wants my opinion and he, yeah. he's still curious what I think about his music. So uh, he's just, he just loves music. Yeah. And that's I think cool. that's, that's really cool. Uh, I think uh, like we already talked about it before as well, but staying, being yourself as an artist, and this is one of the best examples in, in that case, is key to success. Yeah. As in, um, your marketing, your branding, but also if you actually meet him, he doesn't disappoint. You know, like yeah. that. <laughs> you're uh, a completely different guy. You know? Yeah, uh, I've had that as well, where you uh, kind of get yeah, to yeah. meet your heroes, and they exactly. they're they're like dicks or something. Yeah, and you're like, what? Uh, that's such a disappointment. How does that happen? <laughs> but um, no, I'm uh, Martin is really cool, and um, yeah, the whole the whole stamped uh, records team is really great. It's really yeah. cool, positive vibe. Um, around them cool can imagine um a lot of people want to know where you get your inspiration from mm. <laughs> i don't know i don't know why but i see a pattern <laughs> yeah, yeah um and here's a question how you feel about political things but let's just keep oh that god aside. <laughs> let's not Too let's deep. not go there yeah. <laughs> Too deep. okay happiest moments what makes him happy what makes me, me happy? Well, um, when music works out, that makes me really happy. When what I do get you mean when you say it works out? When I get to create something that I really, I really love. And mm. it, it makes me even happier when I, um, when I see that, uh, um, when I see people enjoying it, you mm -hmm. know, when I see people dance to it. Yeah. And uh, that, that re really gives me a lot of joy. But also, just like everyday, really normal stuff like um, friends and family, and that's what what I think is really important. Yeah, it's not all just about success and uh, you know uh, making money. And <laughs> the really the thing that the things that make me happy are not really things. You know, it's just yeah, it's not the physical th the physical things that you can yeah grab. It's yeah, it's so cliche, but. I get no, what it's say. absolutely yeah. true because of when I was touring a lot, you know, I had all these things. I had the success and I was doing really well, but then sometimes you, d you can't really share that with your yeah. friends or family. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to have a good balance mm -hmm. with that. So make sure if you're, um, if you're touring a lot, also, um, make sure that you, you you make a lot of time for your friends and family and you know the people you care about yeah yeah totally agree yeah do you have did you add a tour manager uh i did yeah mm -hmm. and uh, he's a he's a good friend of mine so um that was it was really nice to have a friend with yeah. me on tour i can imagine yeah yeah mm. but i always it's also tricky <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're constantly on each other's lip, you know, like right. every day 
even at the times where you don't want to talk to people because you're tired and hungover yeah. and you just don't feel like being a nice guy or whatever yeah you still have to communicate with someone sometimes even under pretty stressful moments yeah which might not be the right moments to have a talk with your friend i know the lack of sleep really uh yeah that kills you yeah does a number on you definitely yeah. I've had those moments as well. Like now looking back at a few moments, I was like, damn, I was, I was a bitch. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. At, at a few moments. Like most of the time it was normal, but um, at those moments, like when stress was there or I was hungover or whatever happened, yeah. I could be a really terrible guy. Yeah, it's not your, you're not being your best self at, no. uh, and in those kind of moments. No. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we also <coughs> like laughed about that a lot. Yeah. You know, just... Uh, is he st he's still your friend now yeah for sure oh, so it wasn't that bad yeah <laughs> <laughs> no he made it through yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. yeah um say hi to nick gurr he's your biggest fan hi hey nick <laughs> <laughs> cool um if i do i have some other questions i think we already spoke about a lot of things that i wanted to cover all right what can we expect just one thing uh that uh cliche question from an interview what can we expect from you in the in the upcoming months um i'm gonna um, i'm gonna be releasing uh, a lot more stuff with with stamped mm -hmm. so the next one is actually coming out um next week april 5th mm -hmm. it's, it's called uh oh it's this week <laughs> it's friday oh god <laughs> oh, shit, my marketing plan it's april 1st yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah that, so that one's coming out on Friday. It's mm -hmm. called uh, Rave Lab. Okay. And um, yeah, I already have the next ones lined up. So How often do you release? Um, so far, I've released almost every month this year. Is that your goal or that you don't work with goals? or? Um, well, I released a lot less last year mm -hmm. because I also was uh, less inspired, I guess. Mm -hmm. But... Now I just I feel really inspired, so I just want to try and release as much as possible. Yeah, also to have like, you know, keep it going and um, yeah. Um, yeah, you need to stay in the spotlights really because mm -hmm. people forget about you really fast. <laughs> <laughs> really fast. It's good to have a, a constant output. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Like once a month, I I would say it's the minimum right now. Oh really? So yeah. I can actually step it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I would do more. Like if you can do four a month, I would go for four a month. Mm. And so you're not afraid it's gonna. No. Like the 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 Spotify algorithms will keep your music alive. Yeah. It, I it actually it received an email today. My I haven't released a song. A year and a half ago was my last release, and the time before that took me two years before I even release anything so let's say four years ago was my, was like my last main release where i actually got attention <laughs> okay uh and i still got uh, an email from spotify today saying i got st i still got fifteen thousand people listening to my music every month that's amazing without doing anything yeah so music just keeps um recycling keeps re yeah spotify keeps recycling your music with discover weekly with release radar if someone listens to your new song, like to the Super Zoom song, Spotify might notice, <coughs> like, hey, he likes this guy. I'll show him another track yeah. in his Discover Weekly or whatever. Yeah. And I think that's that's the whole reason why I would say go all in. Like, if you can do eight a month, do eight a month. Yeah. Um, you do see a pattern with DJs where they, um, they're just, in the beginning, they're releasing a lot of music. Yeah. And then once they get bigger and bigger, they start releasing less and less yeah because they're maybe too concerned about you know the quality or i think that all has to do with overthinking overthinking yeah. like is the quality good enough what's what are the other people going to think about it i've had that as well yeah and i'm i've i've been there as well and i think well you can you can actually confirm it i think that that's the biggest pitfall at that moment because at that moment you should think about how what the reason was how you actually got there yeah. because somehow you did something good because that's how you ended up being successful in it yeah and then changing the pattern might not be the the best decision at that moment um, it's tricky because yeah you know 
obviously the the sound that you gained success with also gave you that success mm -hmm. so you want to kind of hang on to that but also the the music is constantly changing so you need to also innovate a little bit yeah. and so it's a very difficult uh, area really to maneuver i think it's 100 percent a war with yourself yeah 100 percent for sure because but no one's stopping you from doing anything no one's telling you to not do something or whatever you're just making you're just telling yourself to do something or not do something but you do get a lot of comments and feedback on your music yeah obviously. but you allow it to impact yourself yeah like that's true right now if you i'm not sure how it is with you like if you see a negative comment right now do you do you live that like do you uh how do you say that no do you do you care about that or not anymore no no not anymore exactly so you did but not, r not yeah. anymore yeah of course you have to learn how to yeah not take it personally exactly and uh, that's also a process i guess it's definitely a process but i think that that's where the big success comes in as soon as you start to recognize those things and start mastering it yourself yeah perfect balance uh, absolutely it's a mind game really it's a mind game yeah it's really interesting we yeah we've had a talk about this as well but <laughs> to me it's really interesting to see how especially if you like you mentioned the bigger artists it's so interesting to see what kind of decisions those guys make based on what <laughs> yeah and there there is always a pattern though where you yeah. you see artists you know they get bigger and then all of a sudden they they steer away from their sound mm -hmm. that they were they um that w which gave them all their popularity and then the the fans are always like oh we want the old the old sound but artists always feel the need to explore different stuff and yeah. to experiment and i always i you know i find it quite a shame as well when you have your favorite artist and he starts doing something yeah. completely different but i get it from an artist's point of view but as a as a a, a music lover yeah. i just would want to have more of that yeah. awesome stuff that he's making so it's it's very tricky uh, it is but that artist that you're a fan of evolves as an artist like he, yeah. he, he gets better in music production and as a person and yeah. as a person yeah. like you maybe you you just lost your dad or maybe you just lost your girlfriend that does something to you yeah of course. and since music is coming out of you it, it changes yeah everything you experience in life changes you as a person and as an artist every everything that changes around you infects your music um, so that's why I think that it's not a weird thing at all that people go like this in their career no. because you you evolve <coughs> you go evolve. like that in life as well yeah so. <laughs> like life isn't a straight line you know it no. goes, it's the same as an artist's career it's not a straight line it would be great if it was <laughs> <laughs> really great <laughs> but maybe then it would be really boring as well probably yeah. yeah i think because if you have to do let's say you were still making the same thing as you were doing 10 years ago would, yeah wouldn't be challenging at all no same yeah. samples same plugins exactly it's not not challenging at all no, of course you want to create something that's, uh, you know, that, that that's new and that's fresh to people. And uh, I've I've always ha had this in really high, um, you know, it was high important mm -hmm. importance in my music that I try to um, keep it fresh, you know, yeah. and keep evolving. I, yeah, but I I just get a, a big kick out of um, doing different stuff than other people. Yeah. And maybe that's just me, but um, I would find it really boring to make a song that's already out there, you know, Yeah. to just replicate a song. But, um, but I think that that's where the power is, like being different from the rest, because being the rest means you're taking the straight line. Yeah, but and maybe I go into another extreme where it just <laughs> needs to sound really weird. Yeah. I just like weird music yeah. really well every pro has his con right yeah, like, <laughs> yeah that's that's just the truth like you have to balance all those things out it's okay to take a step from a different genre like doing something differently than the rest yeah but you should also consider the business side of it like how far can i take it until bookers stop booking yeah. me <laughs> i know 
And right? it's, and that's also a mind game because I sometimes I I make a song and then it's inspired on something mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh my god, everyone's gonna hear that I took this song as as the inspiration for my track and then mm -hmm. you play it to people and they're like, what are you talking about? It doesn't yeah. sound like that at all. <laughs> but it's, so it's in here. your head. Yeah, because yeah. you know it's inspired on a certain song. Yeah. And I actually had it last week as well with someone sending me a track. They're so like, hey, I built a new track. It's inspired on this song. Would you please check if it sounds any way like it? Yeah. And I was listening to it, like, listening to it again. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, I really, I had no idea. But yeah. it, that's funny because, like you said, it all happens in your head. Yeah. You're the one who's making yourself crazy with those assumptions. Definitely. And that's really interesting to keep track on like when is something the truth and when it when is it made up by yourself that's that's when you can ask other people you know as a yeah. reference ask Depends, them if, uh, but be because sometimes you could get the wrong feedback as well if you ask people around you like let's say uh, your family or your friends that feedback might be colored is that the right word like uh, it's it's not 100 percent real yeah because they try to protect you and not hurt your feelings so they wouldn't give you the the 100 percent real reaction uh but i think you should find someone in your life that you know gives you the real deal yeah someone that you you value their opinion yeah. and you respect their their musical knowledge <coughs> and uh yeah yeah i and think so too because to me that's the most valuable feedback like getting back from someone yeah i like the track yeah but it can also really help to just um play it to someone who who's not into music at all just to see if it works A different perspective and yeah. and and to see if it sounds like um uh, something that you inspired it on yeah but that's true yeah probably but, but that's not probably not good for the in-depth uh in-depth uh yeah feedback but yeah. i think like checking if it works isn't the right isn't the right strategy because that's just one man's opinion yeah like the person you're you're checking it with might say i think it's horrible yeah. and it might be a worldwide hit yeah so you, you could always check it of course but i wouldn't rely your 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 um your decision to release it yes or no on one or two persons <laughs> yeah uh, it's funny because um i played my new track to my friends this weekend which one the ones coming out this week uh, yeah, yeah that one and um i actually played it to them before and they said like uh, this is so weird what is this shit you know yeah. <laughs> what, is this? what is this and um it's already getting played by yeah. all these all these big djs and stuff so and, and just because they think it's weird doesn't mean that other people think yeah. it is too exactly and um yeah it's it's tricky but it, i think the best way is to go with someone who you trust and yeah. you know you value their opinion a lot yeah and do you think it's in um it's a smart tactic from for an artist to start spending time developing their selves <coughs> like uh, internally like um, um yeah, like that mind game we've been talking about do you think yeah for sure yeah yeah would you recommend if it to you don't then it will kick your ass yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> karma's a bitch <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, but once you start touring and start and start getting success, then you know it will catch up with you. Yeah. And if you already know what you want in life, and um, if you know yourself, it makes it so much easier. Yeah. Because you you don't get distracted by all everything that's uh, yeah, around all you. All the noise around you. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um. But that's it that's just advice for an anyone in general like yeah. if you're making music yeah, if you true. know yourself then life gets easier <laughs> are we getting <laughs> really <laughs> philo philosophy okay yeah, we're talking you sure about it was water <laughs> <laughs> um sh shall i grab you some extra water uh, i'm okay All okay right, that's good. one more question do you collab with not known producers as long as the idea is good uh yeah of course i mean music is music yeah if it's good then it doesn't really matter where mm -hmm. it comes from um we were talking about this yeah. earlier where we were talking about collaborations and if you should only work with people that are higher 
in profile or or lower mm -hmm. and um for me it it it, it, it hasn't it has never been important what kind of status someone has. Right. Just when uh, when I can vibe with someone and if we connect, then I like working with them. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I also worked with producers in different genres as well. Mm. And they've always been um, looked at kind of weird, you know, maybe not the you would normally not place these two artists together mm -hmm. but you know i just think like okay if you can if you if you connect with someone and you can just make something cool then why think about like if this is credible or not or like yeah. or if this is frowned upon because you know there are some some dj some artists for example in the underground that don't like to work with commercial names I just don't really get that and vice versa maybe too but uh, you know yeah. everything is just so put put into into boxes you know mm -hmm. you're mainstream you're underground and i've always been in the middle and i've been like flirting with both sounds yeah. always and that's where i feel comfortable in so if if someone presents a really cool idea and and uh, i really like it then why not work yeah. with that person I totally agree like I've I must up, uh, admit that I've been in a different mindset about this uh, I, I have I had a different <coughs> opinion about this like five years ago seven years ago I was also looking at people on top of me instead of uh, underneath me um, of above me sorry um, but I right now I do believe that it doesn't really matter as long as it brings you a good product like a good new track it's yeah. valuable. I think so too. But of course, I'm, it I'm, helps. I'm talking from a personal yeah. perspective. I don't know if it's the best, um, like business business wise. Business wise, it's better to do it with someone who's bigger, of course, because they can tap into their audience. Yeah, like, I, I get that, but that's not always the case. Yeah, it's interesting to to uh, think about if you make something with a bigger artist, but it's not that good. Would it wouldn't it be better if you made something that's really good with an unknown artist? It's yeah. The question there becomes what's quality, what's good, and what's not. Like I think that if a bigger artist releases something, the quality doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's true. It's the brand. That's true. Um, so in that case, I would say yes. The bigger the release, the uh, the bigger the artist, the better. From business uh, perspective. From business perspective, but creative wise which is also something you should think about as an artist um, making something you like is <laughs> important as well yeah <laughs> it's more satisfying than yeah yeah you just keep tickling yourself like oh shit look what i made it's great to see or it's 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 something new yeah yeah that should something that should be something you should think about as well so maybe yeah, find I a balance in between that should be i mean the I experienced a lot of DJs and artists that um, were so stuck with themselves because they uh, they were just doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And you know they they just didn't know who they were anymore with like their sound and mm -hmm. as an artist. So I think I got sidetracked a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm I why I'm going here, yeah. but. If you're interested, <coughs> if you if you're interested about that subject, I have a, a nice book for you, which is really small because yeah. I don't like big books. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, don't like reading, but I like audiobooks. Perfect solution for me. Anyway, yeah. sidetrack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a book which is called "Who Stole My Cheese." Do you know that book? No. It's about uh, two little mice who go out into a maze to look for cheese, uh, and suddenly the cheese is gone. And I'll I'll don't I'll not spoil spoil it, but. It's really interesting because it, it gives you a different mindset on sticking with the thing you've been doing. Okay. Um, and that's the thing that a lot of successful artists start doing. As soon as they hit success, they keep doing what they've been doing. Yeah. And if you keep doing what you've been doing, you also stay at the point where you've always been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that they, 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 they feel they feel like prisoners to their own. Yeah. You're success. a victim of your own success. Yeah. And they have to play the same songs over and over again. Yeah. And that's why I feel comfortable um, just, 
you know, being under the radar a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I like to make songs that maybe flirt with the commercial side of house music, you know, but I don't mind not having that really big success because you can still in your sets, you you feel free to play whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And if you have that one big smash hit um, or more of those, then you always have to play that every time. And, you know, that would drive me slowly insane, <laughs> maybe. But, you know, I also understand it. Like yeah. if people pay tickets to come see you, they want to hear your, mu your music. Yeah. So I do always um, play my own stuff, but I also like to leave a lot of room for for new music yeah. and other other stuff. Yeah, it's an interesting point you're touching on. I, I lately used uh, the the example of when you go to the concert of your favorite artist, like let's say Metallica is your favorite artist, you want them to play their the top hits. You will be disappointed if they don't. Of course, yeah. And that's how people in the audience at your gig yeah. experience it the same way. Like they know you because of yeah. a certain song or all the songs, I don't know but they expect you to play it. It's also an old fashioned way of me to look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started DJing, y the DJ was still like the guy in the corner <laughs> with, like no in the dark <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. with no lights on him yeah. and just like playing cool music. And that has changed so much. Mm -hmm. um, You're a rock star right now. Well, yeah, the, the, high, the, um, the biggest DJs, they're pop stars. Yeah definitely but that doesn't mean that there's still a scene where you can um you know play um weird and undisco undiscovered yeah. music true definitely and you know i think it would be cool if more um like the the top djs would experiment more in mm -hmm. their in their sets but a lot of them are too scared you know yeah and that's where the overthinking comes in like what would the people think if i do it or blah 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 and you end up doing nothing, so you keep doing what you've always been doing, and you just suddenly slowly die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. A, a lot of DJs go for the sure shots, right? They, they know that they work. Yeah. So, I get it. I do get it. Hmm. It's maybe not not for me. Everyone has their own decisions to make, right? Exactly. Cool, uh, guys. We're gonna oh, notification. <laughs> we're gonna round this thing up. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for participating, thanks for sending your questions in the chat room but also on my Instagram page. Follow this guy's uh, new release is coming up this week. I forgot yeah, the this name. Week, Blazer? Yeah. Laser? Uh, Rave Lab. Rave Lab. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rave and it Lab. sounds exactly like you would, like, would, Im yeah. would imagine. Okay. I kind of imagine that that's that big synth. Like, yeah. No. No? Okay, <laughs> cool. Something else. But yeah, it's kind it, of. I'm really happy with this record a mm -hmm. lot. Um, it sounds really weird, and that's what I like about it. And it really goes off when when I played it. So Cool. And it's beyond stamped, right? Yeah, on stamped. Stamped records. Cool. Guys, thanks for watching. Bart, thank you thank for you guys. Uh, being here. Thanks and, for having uh, me. For answering all these questions. I hope everyone uh, got their value out of it. And uh, yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Peace.